Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout. We have a very special guest with us today, NA, former NHL All-Star John Scott, member of Dropping the Gloves podcast. How's it going there today, John? Not bad, Angus. Thank you for having me here. Very excited. Yeah, so thank you so much for uh, hopping on. I feel like I'm very honored to have you as a guest. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I've been, I showed my girlfriend all the clips of John Scott in the NHL this morning, and uh, she saw some of those fights, and she's a nurse. She's like, I can't believe some of those guys lived after getting thrashed around by that guy. Yeah, it was, there was some good ones in there, but mostly... I didn't try to hurt anybody. I could, people always say like, you should have fought mean. And I never really, there's a couple fights where I really wanted to hurt somebody, but I was a gentle guy out there, Angus. Yeah. I'm trying to kill people. Yeah. Well, I was like he's six foot eight and he could grab me. And like, I've, I haven't scrapped like that, but you know, I've wrestled with buddies and, you know, jokingly fought with them, but I've got a buddy who's six foot seven and probably three fifty, and Oof. he's throw. Oh, he's a monster. Biggest, gentlest guy in the world. But, uh, yeah, he and I were just joke fighting and he threw a half mass at me and I just like bruised to the ribs. I was like, I need to go sit down. I couldn't imagine getting thrashed around like a by a well, heavy it's just it's just physics. Yeah. I'm bigger, bigger. I punch harder. Just you know. You win. Not, yeah. It's not your fault. It is just how <laughs> it goes. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, not anymore. Not anymore. Um, well, earlier this season you said that the Jets really weren't that great of a team. I, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but you know, you weren't sold on the Jets about quarter of the way of the season. Where are you feeling with the Jets now? Well, they're in first place in the West. How can you not be sold on them? Well, I, I was just looking, I was reading the tea leaves. Okay, you strip the captaincy from Blake Wheeler. You don't bring anybody new in, right? You, you kind of just rolling out the same group of guys. New coach, which helps a little bit. I didn't think it was going to give them that much of a bump, but I don't know. Was Blake Wheeler that bad of a captain? Is that the the kind of the message we're getting from this? Because they're a completely different team. Yeah. They're, they're playing great. I think the guy had was wrapped up in his ego almost with the captaincy where he's like, I, I'm captain, so I can't be touched. And once you took that away from him, he was almost vulnerable and has turned it around within that locker room. Well, and then he has he's able to just accept his position too. Right. Which is speaks a lot to him. I think, cause most guys, I don't know if I would have been able to handle it. It's like you strip the captaincy from me. Then I have to walk back into the room and you expect me to work hard and try after you just did me like that. So it's good on Blake Wheeler. I don't know. We had Josh Morrissey on my show a couple of weeks ago and he spoke to just how great Blake took the whole situation. Cause that's a huge knock to your ego. And you, you said it, the guy's got, he has to have an ego. But mm -hmm. it's uh, you got to give him a little bit of uh, commends there to to take that and then keep rolling and keep trying for the team. Well, I always wonder if he had the Aaron Rodgers treatment where he might have done some psychedelics and then all of a sudden he's <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? I got it. I don't think those are that popular in hockey just yet, but usually we're about 10 years behind all the major sports leagues. So maybe we'll. We'll start hearing about some awakenings from Blake Blake Wheeler <laughs> once his contract's over. Yeah, but no, yeah. I, it's a good story, Blake Wheeler. I, I really, I'm I'm happy he's playing well. I really am. Yeah, and I think most Jets fans are too. Like he's 36, and everyone's well, he's too old. He's too old. He can't do it anymore. And with point to game pace at this point, I'm shocked. And he's like you said, they need him to be good. They had no cap room this year. They had nowhere to really go. He signed for another season. He's your should be your best player. And mm -hmm. he's playing like it. You know, him and Connor and those guys, they're playing fantastic hockey. It's it's fun to watch them reach their potential because I've been humping this Jets team for years. I every year I'm like they're going to they're going to make it. This is their year. Back when they had a massively strong defense, you know, and it was Stewart and Buff and Myers and Truba. So it's been almost a decade. Every single year, I'm like, watch out for the Jets. This is their year. This is your year. And then they just disappoint. And this is the year I'm like, these guys are going to suck. And then they just take off. So who knows? Maybe they're they're due for a 10-game losing streak. But I, I'm happy that they're kind of showing that potential. And every everybody's getting to see how good this team is because, gosh, they're fun to watch, man, when they get going. Oh, they, they're so much fun to watch. I like, watch them every night, and it's it, they're one of the best teams. I, like, I grew up an Oilers fan, and going over to Oilers Nation and just checking out what they have to say about this team, it's like you could have written the exact same article about the Edmonton Oilers this year as you did in 2018, 19, 20. And this, the thing with the Jets is I always – they're not 
everybody thinks all these guys are super old and they they have to blow the team up. When you look at the team, they're still other than Blake Wheeler, they're still relatively young, right? So there is room for them to grow even further than this year. So this isn't the end all be all. We have to win it this year or else we're going to blow the team up. I, I was shocked when I went back and looked at their lineup. I'm like, yeah, Connor's only 26. Mm-hmm. Ehlers is 26. Dubois is 24. Like all these guys are, are still in their prime for the next two, three, four years. So I don't know if I'm looking at Canadian teams in the next five years, the jets are right in that conversation with the Leafs, with the Oilers, maybe not even the Oilers. They're in a good spot to succeed, not just this year, but down the road. They don't have any terrible contracts. They're getting wheelers off the book. So I don't know. The Jets, the, the more you dig into it, the more you realize that this team is actually, they're not doing too bad compared to other teams around the league. Do you think it's just because of their goaltender, Connor Hallibuck? That he well, might that, be holding this team together a little bit more than he should be? You said it. I, I think he's he is just a mistake eraser. He makes up for a lot of shortcomings and they don't have a bad D. Like I think Winnipeg's defense, which was it went from like being a super strength to just being a massive void. And now they're back to being somewhat of a of a strength. You know, you got Morrissey, Nate Schmidt, you got Pionk, Brendan Dillon. I know him. DeMello, I played with him. There's no real weak link. So I, I don't think Connor is necessarily standing on his head every night you could probably speak to that better than i can because you watch the games every night I, I just catch them here and there but i think they're just a good hockey team i don't think connor is the saving grace like that sesterkin was last year for the rangers where he literally won them six seven eight games where i think hellebuck is just a really 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 good goalie playing in front of a good defensive team i don't know or is he saving their bacon angus you tell me uh, there's some games where he's definitely saved the team's bacon, but it's not like last year where you're just like, if Connor Hellebuck is not playing at a hundred percent, he, you know, the team's lost. There's been a couple of games where it's like, Oh, Connor, please come back. Yeah. And whatever the team wins in the game. So uh, there's been, you know, games where he has to win the game, but you know, what goaltender doesn't. Every team has those stretches where you need a goaltender to steal one for you. But I just think, and I don't know, has their systems changed that much going from a Maurice to, uh, and now Rick huge. Bonus, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Rick Bonus has basically taken a very poor defensive team where it's just like you have to be a strong defensive team, no matter what your skill set is, you're going to be a defender. Where with Rick Bonus, he said, Hey, Josh Morrissey, you've got the skill, go for yeah. it, let's see what you can do. And he's done that with a couple of the guys, Neil Pionk, who is trying that, isn't succeeding as well as he should be, but you know. It takes time to learn new systems, even though it's been a half season. I you know, still want to believe in Neil Pionk. I like Neil Pionk. I think he is one of the more underrated defensemen. And yeah, he might not put up 50, 60 points, but my gosh, I like him a lot. He's one of these guys who is just an unsung guy. You can plug him in anywhere. He's not going to be your first power play guy. Don't get me wrong, like you said, but good defenseman. Yeah, yeah. It, he's just had some more offensive blunders lately. And so it's, I get it. You got to learn a new system and he's trying his best. So, and I mean, he's such a thorn in the side of so many guys that, you know, and chaos is what we've been calling him around here. Just captain of chaos. Just because he goes around and blows people up or he just causes he's mischief all over the ice. Mischief or? all over the ice. Sometimes he's hitting guys. Sometimes he's just after scrums. He's just a big old hooligan out there. But I mean, the jets have six of those guys that I'd call hooligans, you know, post whistle Dubois leading that charge. So what is it when you look at, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm interviewing you now, but you know, the jets more, when you look at this team, they're first in the West, they're playing great. I think they're eight and two, nine and one, their last 10. What do they need to add the trade deadlines coming up? What is the massive glaring weakness that you think they could address to improve this team? Uh, I don't think there's a weakness, but they do need to find a Blake Coleman kind of like they need to find a really edgy third line guy that can also plug into the well just anywhere in the middle six yeah you don't think Lowry is has the oh Lowry has that I just think one more piece that could fit in there and maybe not an edgy player but maybe somebody that's a little bit more skilled that can plug into the top six if something happens to Nikolai Ehlers because that guy is just delicate he is very delicate so you want someone yeah like a Barkley Goudreau or yeah just like a, a Goodman or who would you say? Yeah. A good, 
No, I'm getting my words. Yeah, Coleman. That's it. So one yeah. of those guys. They're they're not a, they're not cheap anymore. No, they're, expensive. they're not. Yeah, stinking. What's his name? Got traded for two first rounders last year. Went to Tampa Bay. Hagel, Brandon Hagel. Yeah. So good luck. But anyways, all right, I just wanted to know who you thought. So maybe a, a depth forward to round out this group. That's what you need. I think so. If not, like a middle six defenseman like that's kind of those two things it doesn't need to be anything big and shiny it just needs to be someone that you can plug in nicely but it's well, so especially hard with to find colorado someone. like colorado who knows if they're gonna resurrect their season the west is wide open it is absolutely like you have to be happy with where you're at more than halfway through the season your first place in the west did you ever believe <laughs> the jets would be here be honest i thought they would be second in the central division oh in the center okay good yeah yeah no no i wasn't oh yeah I thought the Oilers and the uh, Colorado Avalanche were going to own this entire conference, but no, apparently, both of them, uh, yeah, garbage, garbage. <laughs> All right, what are we talking about next? Oh, what are we this? talking about? Uh, well, we are moving on to the All Star Weekend. We can't talk to you without talking All Star Weekend. Of course, we've talked course. about it ten thousand times. But um, was there somebody that or who was the first person to ac- approach you about you? getting voted in and they're just like, like, Hey man, maybe you should consider backing off on this or putting out a statement. Um, the, it was, it's funny how it works in the NHL where it's never the guy who has the message who gives you the message. So it probably went from, you know, Batman to Campbell to this guy, to my GM, to my PR guy. So it was my PR guy in Arizona who approached me and said, Hey, you're going to be voted in potentially. What do you think about releasing a statement? You don't really want to go. Let's try to, you know, stop this little snowball before it turns into an avalanche. Like, let's just like nip it in the butt. So that, that was, that was the guy who was the go between was my PR guy in Arizona. So then it would go from him to my GM, to Colin Campbell, to Gary Bettman. That's what I thought because okay. They, they told me that it was coming from the NHL, but I don't know who it was from, but everything runs through Gary. Everybody knows that. So, yeah. And then I just said no. And we just went to the All-Star game. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it worked out. Yeah. I mean, it did. I mean, it, go go listen to John talk about it over on fight, uh, Dropping the Gloves because there's been this a thousand times. No, I we, if you want to talk about it, I'm game. I love talking about it. Do you talk about okay. myself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask about the Phil Kessel thing? Cause that is one of my favorite hockey things that I watched because I was at one point a Leafs fan and you know, that was a rough time, but uh, you know, watching John Scott try to beat up Phil Castle, I was just like, this is the best version of hockey we've seen. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. funny what precipitated that. Everybody just thinks I was a, uh, maniac who just went after phil kessel there was a lot it was preseason first of Mm -hmm. all so as a fighter there's no rules in preseason it's just kind of everything goes out the window before that the leafs one of their tough guys jamie devane who i think still plays kicks around the ahl tough kid 6'6 250 he fought one of our middle to lightweights Corey trop and just worked him and Corey is probably 5'10 you know, a buck 80. So there was a, there was a big size difference. And before that game, I let it be known to the Leafs because they were a heavy team. They had Mark Frazier, Frazier McLaren, Colt Knorr, Jamie Devane, and a few other very tough guys. And on Buffalo, it was just me. And we had a couple middleweights and Steve Ott and Corey Trop and whatever. So I let the heavies know in Toronto. I said, if you want to fight, like, you know where to find me, I'll fight you. You're in my division now. Like, let's, I'm not going to, I've, I've turned down two fights in my career and I regretted both of them. So we score, the puck gets dropped. Jamie Devane beats up Corey Trop, center ice, breaks his jaw, kills him. Corey gets mopped up off the ice. I'm fuming this whole time. I go over to the Leafs bench and I look Carlisle in the eye, who was their coach at the time. And I said, Randy, whoever you put out, I'm going to beat their doors off. And I'm, I'm swearing, I'm yelling and stuff. I'm losing my marbles. He's yelling back at me. We're going back and forth. And I just said, whoever you put out, Randy, I'm fighting, basically. And so we were the away team. We went out first. He was the home team. He sends out his first line. Kessel, um, I think it was Bozak and somebody else. And then I'm like, I have to fight him. He's calling my bluff. And so Phil lines up and I looked at him. I said, Phil, I have to jump you. I'm sorry. And he looks at me and he goes, what? 
ref drops the puck. I drop my gloves. He starts swinging. And then it was the rest is history. The goalies fight. Clarkson jumps off the bench. And that was it. And that, I didn't really punch anybody. I think I punched a defenseman in the neck who was coming towards me. But it was just, it was all Randy Carlisle's fault. If he would have put out Fraser McLaren or Colton Orr or a, a Troy Bodie, they had a lot of tough guys. Mm-hmm. It would have been done. I would have fought that guy. We would have been great. And then it would have been moving on to the next shift. But Randy, trying to be a smart ass, puts out Phil Kessel, not thinking I would, you know, call his bluff. <laughs> I'm like, this is preseason, Randy. Of course, I'm going to jump Phil Kessel. Like, let's go. And so that was it. And, and the rest is history, so to say. Has Kessel been kind of pissy with you ever since with that? Or has he never really addressed it? He does it. Well, it's funny how the the Leafs rink works is their locker room is right next to our locker room when there's like a curtain partition. So they, to get to their family, they have to walk through our kind of area. So after the game, he walked through and I saw him and I went and grabbed him <laughs> and I'd never met him before that really. And I grabbed him. And I was like, ah, Phil, we're all good. Aren't we? And he kind of got uncomfortable and squirmed away from me, but <laughs> I texted him, you know, I texted him, hey, you know, my bad, I did what I had to do, and he's fine with it. Phil's a cool guy. I don't think he harbors any resentment towards me. I didn't hit him. He hit me. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, he got those slashes in for sure. If anything, he should apologize to me. (laughs) He He got suspended three games or four games for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was just fun to watch. I think I was like 16 at that time, so that was just like old school. And I was the most hated man in Toronto. And then I dummied Louis Erickson with a clean hit at center ice when I was the most hated man in Boston. So <laughs> there, when I was in Buffalo, everybody in my division hated me. Absolutely hated me. I was fat and fighting Matt Clark's or Matt Karkner in Ottawa. It was that was a great division back in the day. Oh, yeah. Every was, night. I loved watching Leafs games at that time because it was like, you know, the Oilers were oilering at that time. So I was yeah. like, well, let's go watch someone else. And the those Leafs seemed pretty good at that time. And they yeah, had that enough and Kessel and Kadri, and then they had a ton, ton of tough guys, and everybody fought all the time. It was good. It was yeah, it was fun. It was nobody was. Else. We weren't winning Stanley Cups, but no, <laughs> it was no, but everyone was having watch. a great time. Uh, <laughs> it was fun to watch. You you spent time in uh, Chicago, so you came up to Winnipeg quite a bit. What was it like coming into Winnipeg those first couple of years? It's funny. Winnipeg gets a r- bad rap, and I. I've been harsh to Winnipeg because it is a tough climate to go to, right? Mm-hmm. You have to embrace it. It's, it's no, nobody looks at the schedule and goes, yes, Winnipeg in February. I'm excited. Let's go. Like, let's, let's go. You can't go outside. The one thing that Winnipeg had was it was just incredible to play in that rink. It was hands down top three place to play for a visiting player because the fans were rocking it was complete mayhem every time you went there. And it was just fun because you go around the league and you play in Florida, you play in Arizona, you play in Dallas, you play all these places where it's just empty and you could just crickets everywhere. And then you go to Winnipeg and it's just, it was refreshing. The fans love the game. The players love playing in that atmosphere. And I remember playing there with the Manitoba Moose, you know, and it was the same thing. So that was, that was the saving grace of going to Winnipeg because the locker rooms were junk. Mm -hmm. He had to walk a country mile to get to the ice. The restaurants were average. You know, the the steak joint in the hotel was okay. If you wanted to go anywhere else, you had to get an Uber that cost you a hundred dollars. And it it was the rink. The rink was great. The fans were incredible. That, That was the beautiful thing about Winnipeg. And it's still that way to this day. Yeah. Tons of fun to watch a game as a fan. And as a guy that moved from Alberta to Winnipeg, I, I get it where you're my first winter here. It's like, Who the hell thought this was an appropriate place to live? Like, it's cold. It's bitter. Downtown is kind of grungy. I get why hockey players hate it. Yeah, but, you know, you you embrace it. I went to a a school that was the same way in Michigan Tech, where it's just you get 30 feet of snow every winter, but you make the best of it. You go out, you get a, a case of beer, and you have some fun. That's what you do in Winnipeg. Like, we went out. We tied a couple on when we were in Winnipeg. We got there the night before or whatever, and I always had fun. Oh. So we, we we always found a great place to go to, whether it was just Moxie's or whether it was another place to go. So, yeah, I, I have, other than the weather, no, nothing yeah. bad to say about Winnipeg at all. 
Okay, hey, I'll, I'll take that. I will clip that and I will put it on the social media yeah. so everyone here in Winnipeg can love on you. And lay off me because I, I have said some bad things about Winnipeg, but it's more so Canada as a whole. I, I always say this, players don't want to play in Canada. And I firmly believe that's a thing. So yeah, yeah I, I, I love Winnipeg. Yeah, I mean, like if someone from Florida gave me a call and said, hey, you want to come right about the Florida Panthers? I am there in a heartbeat. I, I don't want to- And not pay state tax. Anymore. And that just- too. It's like, I'm going to make a million dollars. Do I want to go to Canada and have like 16% of that chopped off right away because yeah. of the government tax or whatever it is? So anyways, that's yeah. a whole other podcast. That is, uh, as much as I'd love to get into that one. Uh, do you think that there's a return of the power forward? Yeah, I, I do. I think it went away. It's funny how things ebb and flow where everybody just went crazy with the toe drag, saucer passes, no look passes, just dangle, dangle, dangle. And then someone comes along who has that packaged with the good body size. And it's like, gosh, we can have both of these things. You look at a player like Tage Thompson, who isn't afraid to go into the corners and is a huge body. The guy's six, six, and he can put up 50 to 60 goals. So I, I just think it's evolved. I don't like they're very rare where you get an Eric Lindros type. Remember mm-hmm. The guy is just or like a, Lucic had a slight window of that, but I don't know. I, it's it's a rare breed when a true power forward comes along who can contribute offensively and really get in on the four check. Like an Evander Kane, you mentioned the Alberta. He's a very good power forward. As much as I hate Evander Kane, on the ice, the guy is a very good hockey player. And yeah. there's not many guys who can do everything that he does. So I don't think it went away. I just think the minor league systems were more focused on individual skill and less on the physical side of it. So I think players now are seeing like, Hey, I can still have good hands and just really be physical. And that's another asset. Cause no one hits anymore. There, there's not a lot of physical play in the game other than a few guys here and there. So I don't think it's dead. It's not like the golden age, you know, with the Legion of doom and those, those type of players, but it'll never go. Everybody loves size and hands and speed. It's like the, the trifecta in baseball, the Mike Trouts of the world. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, where was the favorite, where was your favorite city to play in? Oh gosh. It, 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 the lot goes into that answer. Is it just the, the rink and the fans? Because that would be, yeah. Winnipeg would be up there or Philadelphia would be fun just because the fans are just a holes, but then you got to think of off the ice and having fun. And then Philly and Winnipeg are not on a list because Philly, you get robbed and stabbed and you got to watch where you go. <laughs> It's and the Winnipeg, same thing here. You just here. don't go outside. Yeah. You just don't go. I, a good Nashville was great just because you kind of got a mix of everything where you can go out. There's entertainment. There's good food. And the fans are surprisingly really good in Nashville. So, I, oh gosh. Yeah. Nashville was good. Uh, I think it was a low key good time. But yeah, they're, they've gotten pretty popular of late. Yeah. So, like, if a Jets fan is wanting to get out of Winnipeg and go see the Jets somewhere, you're saying Nashville's probably the place to go check out. Well, <sighs> It's like, do you go to Arizona and you get a, a cheap flight and then you pay cheap tickets? You and used then to Scott pay cheap tickets. Great. Not and anymore? Not anymore. Apparently they've raised them up because they've got that small bar and apparently they're they charging. They have 4,500 seats they can sell out every game. Yeah. I would go to Nashville. It, it's a great city. It really, really is. And there's lots of great food and stuff to see. They have live music. I'm a country music fan. Ooh. So it, it, it's not abnormal to just walk down the strip and just see like a Morgan Wallen playing in a bar or a Jason Aldean or something like that. So that that's where I would go. But I'm not everybody. Who's your uh, country music star that you haven't seen that you would love to? Oh, I haven't seen a concert in a long time, but I, uh, I'd like to see Eric Church. I'd like to see, uh, who's the one guy? Man, Blake flaking on his name right now. But yeah, probably Eric Church or Morgan Wallen. Those two guys, one of those two guys. seem to be rocking to right now. What about uh, any of the old schoolers that are passed away that you would love to, that you would have loved? Well, to Johnny see? Cash, I, I feel like he would be fantastic. I, I really, my wife loves his music too. And we, we still play him a lot around the kids. And then John Denver, I don't know if he would be country per se, but I like John Denver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if anyone that listens <laughs> to folk music loves yeah. John Denver, I get it. He would be uh, good. He, you said you passed on two fights in your career. Uh, which were those two players that you passed on? Jody Shelley, when I was at San Jose, he um, asked me, we were up a couple goals, and they went right down and scored. 
and then Steve McIntyre. I just feel like Mac was always is the toughest guy I ever played against. And I said no to him in the preseason one time. And I was like, you know, it would have been nice to see how I would have fared against Mac because he was still is in my eyes, the toughest guy to ever lace him up. The guy was an absolute killer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I watched many of his fights there and seeing what you could do and seeing that what Mac could do, I would have paid a million dollars to see that yeah, fight. That would have been funny. And everybody always says, Oh, you didn't fight much in your career. I asked everybody and oh, they yeah. would say no. So it's not like I'm, I'm, you know, turning down fights left and right. It's like, I think the most fights in a year I had was seven or eight, but it wasn't for a lack of asking. I, you know, I, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm not going to call people out by saying they didn't fight. They didn't fight. Nobody would say yes. It was just one of those things where you've got seven, in, you've got seven inches on me. There's not a chance in the world. I don't care what you do to any of my players. I'm sitting that one out. So. There were a t- like I, tall guy, like Colorado had this guy Bordalo who was just killing guys. You know, yeah. I, he fought McGrath a few times and I would ask him to fight and they would say no. And it is just frustrating a little mm. bit, but yeah, what are you uh, gonna that's, do? yeah, that was 10 years ago now. Who cares? <laughs> still talking about it. I mean, still, it still irks me. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> every night I think about it. Uh, all right, we got a couple of rapid fire questions. Uh, Bedard, where does he end up? Um, ideally for me for the NHL, Montreal. Ooh, uh, thousand goal score. Does it happen in your lifetime? No, Blank nobody's goal. lifetime. No, nobody. No, oh. Uh, who's going to win the cup this year? Toronto. <laughs> and your best pump up jam? Eh, my best pump up jam. I, I used to really be into like rock and roll and I would listen to like, I don't know. Like the tragically hip. I didn't need music to get going. I was more of a laid back player. Maybe that was to my detriment where I should have been listening to more like angry stuff. I just would throw the hip on, to be honest with you, and just be like, this is, you know, blow it high dough. Okay, sounds good. You know, but these young kids, I never controlled the radio once I got to a certain age. These guys were listening to rap. You're probably a rap guy. You look no, like a rap guy. I'm a just... huge hip guy. Honestly, yeah. I've never heard of anyone say that uh the tragically hip is their go-to. Cause like I'll throw on tragically hip and like blow on high dough, like gets me fired up, head by a century. Yeah. It just like it's calm, but it's just like, let's go. Let's play some hockey boys. Well, I used to like when I played junior C and junior B back in Ontario, I would yeah, I'd throw on like corn or something and like really rage and I'd go out there and be like an animal and just fight and lose my mind. I just learned that I I didn't play good that way where I was always just I needed to be just relaxed, you know, and I just play the hip. I play some if it was rap, it was like Dr. Dre or something, nothing too crazy. But these kids these days, it was all techno and stuff. I know yeah. that. All the I, Europeans, all that stuff. I didn't really care for it. Yeah, I uh, did. I was a mascot for uh, one of the MGHL teams last season. And honestly, just listening to the music that they're listening to, I was like, yeah, this is why I get my own little change room and get to listen to what I need to because I could not get excited for a hockey game listening. To I this. went to a game last this weekend with my kids and I I almost left because the music was so bad. My kids are like, what are they playing? And it was like Cardi B and stuff. And I'm like, we got to go. Like yeah. it was bad lyrics. So we're the kids, these kids, these days, <laughs> Angus. Don't even, well, how old are you? You're probably what? 25, 26. Yeah. So you're still a baby. You're rating them. I'm 40. I'm old. I got kids. So can't be doing that anymore. No. Well, you've got seven. Do you not? I do. Wow. Uh, so yeah. anyone that wants to have a big family, what's the piece of advice that you'd want to give them? Well, obviously you have to have sex. So <laughs> get that, married, that married first, and then comes the, the procreation, but I don't know. Kids are good. Well, I, I've never heard someone who said, I regret having so many kids. So they, they're good. They're I good. enjoy it. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like seven daughters, like, do they know that you are a big, scary guy out on the ice? back in your past or they really like dad is dad my older ones kind of are starting to understand it because i'll do events or i'll do i'll get interviewed and they'll be around and they'll ask like why did you fight people or what's going on and i would 
I, so I've, I've slowly broke it down. Like, yeah, I had to fight. That was my job. I was protecting people and this and that, but no, you know, half of them were born after my career. So four were born while I was still playing. And then the three were born after. So we, it's not a thing. There's people I have here in my hometown that don't have any idea. I played hockey. Oh, nice. So it's just kind of, you just get to live your normal nice. life. Normal, boring engineering job. As you can see behind me, there's my list of jobs I got to do for this couple of months. And just a normal Joe Schmo now. It's crazy. And like, does anyone like care at work that you're John Scott, the former NHL, or you're just John at the office? I'm just John, the engineer here. No, they they think it's neat. Like they'll, every once in a while, someone will like, you, you work with that guy? What? No. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I do. So I don't know. I, I try not to. As much as I love talking about myself, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not that guy. So I just don't bring it up. When someone asks what I do, I just say I work engineering. I don't say anything other than yeah. that. No, that's fair. That's fair. Because I'm starting to get to the point where people are recognizing me and like, you're that guy. Oh, like, no, I am that you got guy. The, you got the hat and the tattoo and the shirt that says the Goose podcast, Jets yeah. Nation. So that, I, I guess that kind of helps <laughs> yeah and i mean winnipeg's such a small town or small city too that it just yeah people see my face they know who i am you got a uh, likable face yeah apparently i got stopped for 15 minutes in minus 12 last night because somebody no wanted kidding. to talk yeah i was like oh, i just want to get in the car <laughs> listen to you that's cool yeah it's it's been cool uh i got a couple of fan questions for you okay uh so the first one is they want to know did it hurt when kessel slashed you um, not in the moment, but um, afterwards, yeah, the legs yeah. are a little sore because he really ripped me. Yeah, <laughs> like if you he watch got it, two he, handers on there. He goes to town. Yeah. Uh, do you ever wonder how did Phil Castle become the Iron Man? It, yeah, right. Because it was him and Keith Yandel. Yeah. But when you look at it, you go, okay, it kind of makes sense because neither of those guys really hits. They don't play physical. They stay out of those areas where you could get hurt. So it does make sense and they're decent hockey players, but yeah, it is, it is kind of funny that the two players who are least physically fit are the <laughs> iron men. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where there's guys who are absolutely just shredded 3% body fat who should be the iron man. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It is. Uh, who was your favorite team growing up? The Bruins. Bruins. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ray Bork. Ray Bork. Yeah, you based your, like, because you, you started off as a defender and then moved up to the forwards. Yeah, um, I played D up until Chicago. They turned me into a forward. Coach Q? Coach Q. They had some injuries up front, and he's like, go play forward. And then I just stuck after that. I didn't play forward with Minnesota at all. So, yeah. yeah. Q saw something in me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how has your view on hockey changed since uh, leaving the ice? Well, yeah, it's funny. People are always bitter because they think their era was better. And uh, it's not like the old day. I think hockey's better. I think it's in a good spot. I think we've evolved with, you know, the times. I think it's a skill game and people want to see the fast pace up and down the ice. I do think we could incorporate hitting a little more, but I, I think hockey's in a really good spot. I enjoy watching the game. So yeah. I'm not going to dump on it at all and say it should be like how I played because I, I do – I do think hockey is really fun to watch now. Excellent. Uh, what do you miss most? The flights in the hotels. They treat you like a movie star. You know, you get on the plane, you can order whatever you want, food wise, beers, mixed drinks, anything. Hotels are five star overlooking the ocean or the mountains or whatever. Like yeah, it's, you got to try it. Like it's, it's unbelievable the way <laughs> you get treated as an NHL player. Like it's, it was it was amazing. So the, I miss that the most. What was your uh, go-to snack on the plane slash drink? Well, it was beers. So it was I, the beers? Yeah. After uh, the games, it was a couple Guinnesses, and then we would switch to light beers. Um, going to the games, you would have smoothies and stuff. Yeah. That, that was more kind of apropos. You're not going to booze to the game. But snacks, I, I liked it when they had sushi when you got on. Sometimes they would have like little pierogies. I'm a big pierogi guy. They would have a cheese tray. I would have some cheese. I was, I didn't discriminate. I would eat anything they would put out there just because I, I knew I wasn't going to play very many games. So, so you I'm might like, as well enjoy your time. Toss on the feedback and let's go. So that, 
and I, I I took advantage of every opportunity that came up. So it, yeah, it was good. All right. Well, if you're a big pierogi guy, I have to at least try to promote Manitoba a little bit. Uh, so the, we have a big Ukrainian fest up in Dauphin, which is about three hours up from Winnipeg. If you're ever okay. looking for some fabulous pierogies and just a really cool experience altogether, Yuki Fest in Dauphin, man. like pack up the kids, get them up. No, here. no. no OK, not, well, that was that. worth a try. <laughs> it was a good attempt, but I'm not driving three hours north of Winnipeg just for pierogies. I, I'll, I'll sacrifice a little flavor to stay in Traverse City, Michigan. But that All good right. that was a good attempt, Angus. Thank yeah, you. well, I got it. I think that's the contract since I've moved to Manitoba is I have to at least bring one other person here and then I can leave again. So no, we'll keep keep trying. Yeah, we're it's trying not gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> uh my my dad wanted to know uh who is the scariest guy you went up against? Who I fought. Oh gosh. Um DJ King. Oh. He was a tough, tough, tough cat. I think he was from Saskatchewan. I know he played in the NHL. He was big old Indian. Scary. Yeah. And I fought some like tough guys like Orr and Peros and all these other guys. But DJ King was a scary cat. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you're the logo of the Beauty League. How did yeah. you go from being like, you know, a guy in the NHL that was not playing every night to being the guy on the cup <laughs> i um he was my agency octagon hockey so I, I was repped by them and i always would train there in the summer in minnesota my, my we owned a place there for a while so we would spend our summers there and have a good relationship with the guys and i obviously did the all-star thing and they really rallied behind me they're like you know what we're gonna do this league now and donate all the money to charity can we use your image you know as our logo because everybody has a logo, Adam West for the NBA. I don't know who the NHL guy is. Ted Lindsay, some people think it is. But, yeah, I was like, sure, go for it. I don't get any money from it. nothing. No royalties, which is a shame. But, yeah, it's it's cool. I got my own league, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, do you get royalties from HockeyFights.com? Nothing. nothing. Isn't that a joke? I gotta, that I is start, a joke. My agent's terrible. I got nothing at all. Oh. I'd be talking to those boys that uh, own the company and trying to get some uh, funds for all you fighters. You make more than I do, Angus. I would not imagine. a chance. No, I get paid diddly. Yeah, right. Listen to him. That was a lie. You can tell he hesitated. The guy's loaded, dude. Two hundred bucks a month is what I get paid to do this humble work for the Nation Network. No, I don't believe it. The I... guy's killing it. <laughs> I wish I have the rich nurse girlfriend, so she is supporting ah, my dream of talking to hockey good. players on a regular basis. You'll get there. Just I, I get a little more than two hundred, but not much. Not much. Two hundred American. I guess two hundred American. There we go. I mean, you've got seven <laughs> kids to raise. I've got three cats, so you know make that money work potato potato it's yeah the same thing right <laughs> <laughs> all right john that's all i've got uh actually one more question for you okay. uh is there a charity that you like to support and if so which one is it so we can support it why the last few shows i've done everybody's giving to charity is that the is that the new thing i think it's just so we we feel bad that we're not giving anything so people with more money can give more money no, well, let's talk offline because I have a few uh, charities that I work with. I don't want to ruffle too many feathers. Cause, okay. Uh, no, I, I'm a I'm a pro life guy, so I, I know a, a lot of people don't like talking about that sort of thing. So maybe we'll talk offline. But maybe I should give you money to donate to your charities. That's oh. that's what I think we should do. Well. Flip the script a little bit. Who do you like to donate to? uh, I have been a big supporter of Winnipeg Harvest here in uh, Ah. Winnipeg. Yeah. If I was back in Edmonton, it would be the mustard seed in Edmonton. So if you want to donate to one of those two, I'd be so happy. You know who I work with in Canada is Hockey Helps the Homeless. Hockey Helps the Homeless. That's okay. Yeah, they're a great company. They go through and every town they do a tournament, they kind of help out. They set up either shelters or places where the homeless can go and eat. And they really try to make a difference and they raise lots and lots of money. And I do a lot of good work with them. So maybe that would be a good one. Angus, cool. if you want to donate some money, that would be a good one. Hockey helps the homeless. There we go. Yeah. All right. That's all, all right. I got. That's all I've got too. Thank you so much, John. And if we, maybe next summer we could grab you on again. That would be fantastic. And I guess maybe after the jets win the cup, that'd be great. That'd be fabulous. <laughs> all all right. right. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Angus. Cheers, okay. man. I got to get out of here and grab grab the kids. All right. Bye. See ya. 
All right. That was John Scott on Jets Nation Radio. Uh, give him a follow. Go check out Jets. Uh, check out Dropping the Gloves, his podcast. Give us a follow. Uh, I believe we're now on YouTube. So uh, uh, I think I had to say something about points bet. Nobody gave me an email. So uh, pointsbet.com. That's cool. <laughs> um, have yourself a great rest of your day. Thanks again to John Scott. And we'll talk to you again soon.